The Samsung Galaxy S21 is going to have all of the features you've been waiting for and I'll be sharing the details right after this. If you're new here and want to stay up to date with the latest tech, please hit subscribe followed by the bell. So we haven't had the note yet, but we're already receiving leaks about the Samsung Galaxy S21. We've got renders, specification leaks, and news of features that you've all been waiting for. Before we get started though, give this video a like if you're looking forward to the Galaxy S21, and let me know in the comments which version you're actually waiting for. So when it comes to the Samsung Galaxy S21, we have to be careful as many people out there are spreading rumors, and while we are starting to get a few leaks here and there, a lot are based on guesses. So we're going to start off by clearing up some of the rumors, and then we'll go through what it is that we'll actually be getting. So many blogs are already giving us the name of the Samsung Galaxy S30. This is simply just wrong. While we did have a jump last year, it was of course to match the year 2020, so we won't be seeing that huge jump again. When it comes to the new Galaxy, it is of course going to be the Galaxy S21. When it comes to the design, we've had many different design claims when it comes to the Galaxy S21. Some people are claiming that they're going to be moving to a flat screen design with flat edges similar to the latest iPad Pro. The design is said to have a completely flat front display and then on the sides it will have touch sensitive buttons. I just can't see this ever happening for the Galaxy S21 as it just looks too much like an Apple device and not not something Samsung would deliver. Next up, we've got the idea that the Galaxy S21 is going to have 10 cameras on the rear. While this would be great for photographers, it's just not something that's ever going to happen in the S range. Nokia tried it and it wasn't that successful, and we also have to remember that we just don't need 10 different lenses. Given the price of the S20 Ultra with its impressive cameras, a Galaxy S21 with 10 different cameras would cost an unbelievable amount of money, so again, it's just not going to happen. We've also got people claiming that the Galaxy S21 is going to have a very curved waterfall style display. This means it's completely curved over both sides and gives us a huge screen to body ratio. Now while this design has had some success for many other manufacturers, I just don't see it happening on the Galaxy S21. It seems Samsung have been moving away from the curved displays as they've already switched to 2.5D glass in their latest editions, so I would expect this to continue. Finally, we've had a wild idea that we may get a transparent screen for the S21. This is a definite no as the technology is just not there yet. We haven't seen anything like this, so even if it does exist, it's not going to be ready for consumers. When it comes to the actual design of the Samsung Galaxy S21, the truth is it really doesn't matter too much right now. While there may be a design in mind and a prototype already out there at Samsung, it won't have been finalized just yet, so it could of course still change. We can however get information on hardware and specs that are unlikely to change. The first actual leak we have comes from well-known leaker Ice Universe, and he published a tweet last week to say that Samsung is considering an in-display camera sensor on the Samsung Galaxy S21. He advises that they're evaluating the feasibility of the technology, and if it's ready, then it will be in the Galaxy S21. Everyone has been very excited for this new technology and it's always been expected that 2021 is going to be the year it's delivered. We can finally have a full screen display without motorized parts and the only thing that people are worried about is the additional cost that it might bring. We've also got reports suggesting that this in-display selfie camera is going to be using a half inch selfie sensor with a 48 megapixel resolution. The Samsung Galaxy S21 will of course be using the new and improved next generation OLED display. We've had patents filed for curved displays with protruding buttons, and we've now got a new patent showcasing a very curved display. The patent was discovered by Let's Go Digital and it was rendered by Concept Creator. It shows a display that's not only curved at both edges, but it also has curves at the top and the bottom. While it does look similar to the new design from Huawei, it's actually very different as Huawei's is just the glass and not the display itself. The patent is for the screen to curve on all edges and it includes the rounded off corners. Now we know it is intended for a Galaxy as it was listed as a Galaxy smartphone display and it's also logged as that on the World Intellectual Property Office database. 
Its full screen design means that it will of course have an in-display fingerprint scanner and it helps fuels reports that the in-display selfie camera will be there as well. Some people are speculating that this is of course for the Note 20 but many believe it's for the Galaxy S21. Next we've got news of an incredible 150 megapixel nano cell camera to debut in the Galaxy S21. They already broke records with their latest 108 megapixel sensor that we saw in the S20 Ultra and now they're pushing the boundaries even further. The new 150 megapixel camera is going to be launching towards the end of this year which will most likely be too late for the Note range and this means we could well have it debuting in the Galaxy S21. We also had patents filed by Samsung for multiple technologies that could also be present in the Galaxy S21. We had a patent for a holographic projector to produce stereoscopic images in the air, almost like a 3D hologram. While it could be a cool feature, I think it's just too gimmicky and not something we'll see in the S21. We also had patents filed for a lot of sensors that were initially thought to be in the Galaxy Note 20 but they are now looking very unlikely. This means if they are to go ahead with these plans then we could well see them in the S21 instead. First we've got mention of an electromyography or EMG sensor. Now EMG is used to measure electrical signals generated by muscles and can be used to assess the health of a muscle and the nerve cells that control them. We also have mention of an electroencephalogram sensor or EEG sensor. This is again to measure electrical signals but instead of muscles EEG sensors are for measuring our brain activity. Finally we have the electrocardiogram or ECG sensor and this measures electrical activity of the heart and help diagnose abnormal heart rhythms. While we always get many patents filed which do fuel rumours of new features, I believe if any are to be true then it's going to be the new sensors that we see in the S21. While a holographic projector would be an incredible feature, it would be very limited in its use and not something I can see them doing. Fitness and health are very popular at the moment and used commonly in today's smartphone peripherals so I think this would be a great fit for the S21. Now of course all of that is estimation and speculation from patents, Samsung file a lot of patents to protect their ideas and it doesn't mean it's definitely going to be happening. One thing we can be certain of though is that the Galaxy S21 is of course going to come in a few different sizes to suit all consumers, it's going to have the latest Samsung display along with the best hardware and cameras they can source at the time. Going by the current releases we can expect them to stick with the rectangular shaped camera module on the rear and they're going to provide 3-6 to six cameras depending on variants. When it comes to the chipset they'll of course be using the Snapdragon 875 which is a 5 nanometer system on chip, it's going to provide better performance and efficiency over the current chipsets used and unfortunately as usual this is only going to be for certain regions including North America and for most markets globally we'll be getting the equivalent Exynos chip that doesn't actually perform as well. We'll likely get the usual choices of 128, 256 or 512 internal storage and this will of course be UFS 3.1. When it comes to RAM we'll likely be getting a choice of 12 or 16 gigs of RAM which is still more than we're ever going to need. There will likely be a hybrid SIM tray to support micro SD cards but there won't be a 3.5mm audio jack. It's going to have all of the usual sensors and we can of course expect an in-display fingerprint scanner. Until the design and the screen sizes are finalised we unfortunately can't estimate the battery capacity but expect slight improvements on the predecessors and of course wireless and reverse wireless charging. As always it's going to be IP68 water resistant and when it comes to price it's no doubt going to be expensive. Samsung surprised us with just how high the Galaxy S20 Ultra launched at so it's going to be interesting to see if they create another very premium device or work at bringing this cost down. Of course there's unfortunately a lot of speculation right now but as soon as we receive any solid leaks I'll be sharing them with you guys straight away. As always though I'd like to know your thoughts in the comments, who out there is waiting for the Samsung Galaxy S21 and which model are you waiting for. But thanks for watching the video, if you liked it smash a thumbs up, if you didn't hit the thumbs down twice and I'll see you guys in the next one.